and welcome to Coffee and Chats with me, Miss D, where we talk all things school and learning. And today we're going to be talking about how we can encourage children to fall in love with maths again. So go get yourself a cup of coffee and come back. It can be so frustrating when your child doesn't engage with maths. They're being set all this home learning and they're just refusing to show any kind of interest in it. And it might, best case scenario, be that they find it boring. Worst case scenario, it is tantrums, tears, stressful for you and them. So what can we do at home to support them? Well, I've got five tips that I would like to share with you today on how you can support your children to make maths not only bearable but hopefully enjoyable. Tips one and two are practical, three and four are about language and tip five is my personal favourite. So my first two tips are ways to really start to engage children with maths from quite a young age. So tip number one, make maths relatable. What does this mean? Well. The great thing about maths is that it is out there in everyday life, on the streets, in the park, at home, when you're baking, maths is everywhere. So point it out to them. You could measure them, how much have they grown in a year? Count animals on long drives. You can try and make patterns out of blocks and Lego. Maths doesn't always need to be about calculations. A lot of this involves reasoning and problem solving, which are key skills in maths. Tip number two. Use manipulatives to tell the story. Give your child items that they can physically manipulate with their hands to tell that math story. If they're learning about division, give them pasta to share into equal groups. If they're doing fractions, get them to help you cut up that pizza into equal parts. Using their hands to physically manipulate those objects helps them to tell that story and really engages the children and gets them to take ownership of their own learning. Get them to tell that narrative. What is going on with those pieces of pasta? Where are they going? How many people are they being shared between? How many are there in each group? It will engage them and excite them. Tip number three, be positive about maths. Now, this might sound really obvious, but it is such an easy pitfall to fall down, especially when you've got your own hang-ups from when maybe you were at school or you were a kid learning maths. It's really easy to say things like, oh, I'm rubbish at maths, or I hated maths when I was at school. But this is actually really not very helpful. And it just gives your child that green card to think, well, and I don't need to be good at maths either. I don't need to put the effort in. Instead of saying, yeah, I don't like maths either, you could try saying something like, I sometimes find maths difficult too, but that's how I know I'm learning. This acknowledges their struggle without giving it the power to take over. We want to build resilience in our children so that when they come up to a difficult problem, they don't just give up, but they see it as part of the learning process. If you model positive behaviours towards maths and just learning in general, they will start to mimic these and they will do them too. Tip number four, don't tell your child they are smart especially when they've done something well. Now that might seem really counterintuitive, but hear me out. This is what you're actually telling your child when you tell them that they are smart. You're devaluing hard work, perseverance and grit, all things we really want to foster in our children. So what can we say to our children instead when they do do something really well? Because we want to acknowledge that. Here's what you can say. Instead of saying, I'm really proud of you, say to them, gosh, you must be so proud of yourself. What this does is this encourages them to be intrinsically motivated because they've done it for themselves. They've not done it for someone else. It also gets them to notice how they're feeling in that moment when they have achieved something so that hopefully they'll want to achieve something again. My final tip is one that's really personal to me and the one that I feel has made the most difference in myself, but also my students that I work with. So tip number five, Take away the time pressure. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't used to think I was good at maths. I would panic if I was ever asked to answer something on the spot. Seven times 12, go, ah! Freak out, panic, hated it. And I used to think that children who could answer faster than me were better at maths than me. This is just such a huge misconception. Answering mental maths calculations like that, while very impressive, is such a small part of what maths is really about. Maths is about exploring, reasoning, problem solving. So take away that time pressure and you'll be amazed at how confident your child will become. So to summarize, make maths relatable, give your children manipulatives, stay positive about maths, don't tell your children that they're smart, even if you really want to, and finally, take away that time pressure. I hope that was helpful. As you've got this far, please like and subscribe. Bye for now.